A Bryanston High School teacher has been charged with sexually assaulting at least two learners at the school. The abuse is said to have taken place on netball tours and on school property. The incidents are said to have taken place between 2017 and 2018. The educator is currently out on bail and has been suspended by the school. To discuss this matter further, I'm joined in the studio by Gauteng Education Spokesperson Steve Mabona. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. When did you first get wind of these allegations? Look, um, the department was informed uh, when the complaint was, laid, was lodged in, in the first week of the school opening, that is on the 9th. Uh, but then the school, uh, they then launched an investigation, updated the department on what is it that they will be doing. And um, we are actually indebted to them because unlike other SGB you know, we will then wait for the department to come and instruct or maybe advise on what to do. Already they appointed a, an independent a law firm to just uh, go into the preliminary investigation just to find out whether there's any, you know, case for the educator to, to be answerable to. They also involved the police. I mean, police, they then uh, decided to arrest and uh, he appeared in court. But... Um, we we actually indebted to them to say, look, in future, I mean, you can't wait up until the department come to the school. Was and it say, the school itself that blew the whistle, or was it the learners? And I'm asking this question because I'm thinking of part-time boys. That was a, a, a very contentious issue, especially given the fact that it was said that even the learners they were reluctant to talk about the the, the tragic events that they'd experience. But you'll understand that Parktown and uh, all other incidences, they actually was an eye-opener mm. because we encouraged learners to report and we introduced mechanisms at all schools to say if you have an issue, there's an educator that is appointed, which you can go and, uh, and, lay, and lay a complaint there. Uh, you know, you can go even uh, anonymously and there's uh, some apps that are introduced in some of the schools where you can just lay a complaint there. So learners are encouraged and they know that the support is there. I mean, we've been in the pu public platform to say, if you dare touch our learners, then okay, we will so make tell sure us in this case, uh, was it the learners who came forth and, and when did they do so? Because I've mentioned that these allegations relate to the years 2017 and 2018. When do they say uh, the incidents began and how? Look, um, the complaint was received only this year. In January, uh, we were informed after school opening that there's this complaint, and uh, we sent our officials to say you really need to make sure that you monitor the case very closely. And working with the school and the SGB, then the police were involved. They started investigating, and hence there was an arrest. But then they did not leave it there. They then appointed an FM, hmm. which is going to you know investigate all the circumstances and the. They decided that on the 5th and the 4th, then there will be a disciplinary process. But what they did, they then suspended the educator. I, I realize that some of the details are subject to court proceedings uh, and uh, the probe itself, but I'm just trying to get a sense. What happened? What are the learners saying it happened? Because we mentioned the fact that some of it happened at netball school tours. What do they say happened to them? How? When? Look, um, we, remember we learned from you know, previous cases. I mean, we lost the case you know, where we thought that uh, the perpetrator will be in prison now. So we don't want to go into merits of what transpired, but we know we have reports on what transpired. Uh, hence, there's a case, you know, for the perpetrator to, to, to be answerable to at the school in an internal, you know, process and in, in the court of laws. So what we are actually hoping for is that our law enforcement, uh, enforcement agencies must then work very hard to make sure that we have a tight case which uh, will be presented in the, in the court of law. We don't want a situation whereby the magistrate or the okay, judge will so be saying want to share there will be a comedy of errors. No, these sexual assaults that were happening, uh, which uh, are very gory things that uh, we, we saw in Is the Is this reports. somebody employed by the school? Are they an educator other than being a PE or um, a, a netball coach as well? It's an educator who's been appointed by the SGB. And hence, uh, we, we are actually uh, proud that the, the SGP did not uh, waste any time, suspended him, uh, because uh, you didn't need to give them an opportunity to, 
you know, uh, indicate on what transpired. One need to be given an opportunity to indicate what transpired. Then the, that process will, will unfold, but we are happy that it is now outside the school. And given the learners will be provided with counselling. We are continuing to do that because we've already started with that process of supporting them emotionally. Given the, the several cases that you've highlighted as being instructive in helping you to be a little bit more vigilant in such cases, are you as the education department, including the SGBs, re-looking really at your hiring procedure, your vetting processes? I know that there are new... Um, there's new legislation that's coming to effect requesting aspirant teachers to provide a certificate from the police no older than six months. But what other areas are you looking at to improve your safety for children? Look, uh, we're working very closely with the South African Council of Educators. Uh, it's compulsory that anyone that must be certified, they need to you know, be screened, they need to give that clearance. Because if without that clearance, then they would not be issued that certificate. So for us as a department, we're not going to appoint any educator without a say certificate. And including the SGPs, they know they cannot appoint a, an educator without says. So we are working very closely just to make sure that that certificate is authentic and it assists us. But further than that, um, we take security very serious and safety in our environment. There's policies that need to be, you know, uh, implemented at the school by the SGB, you know, uh, school management. They know that anything that is harmful to our learners, they need, there's protocols that we've introduced okay. on what is it that they need to do in terms of reporting, uh, attending those learners, how do we interact with parents, just okay. to make sure that the, the environment is safe. Thank you very much for your time. Harding Education Spokesperson Steve Mabona, thank you very much. Uh, Francis, it's over back to you.